Let me guess, you had a leak at your house and now you have mold and now you gotta go through a process called mold remediation. But you spoke to a family member or friend and they said, hey, mold remediation is a joke. Just cut it out, throw some bleach on it, relax, take a deep breath, I got you covered. If you're new here, my name is Brad and I've been in the mold industry for 15 years now. In this video, I'm gonna break down mold remediation for you and you gotta watch this entire video because it's not what you think. I mean, it's some really, really, really dark stuff. Okay, calm down, it's not that dark, but there's certain stuff that you need to know. But before we get into it, if you can please hit that subscribe button as well as the bell notification so you get updated every time we put out a new video, it will help our channel grow and reach more people. All right, so let's go. So look, mold is not new. One of the earliest recording instances of mold remediation can be found in the Old Testament of the Bible, in which God commanded the Israelites to get rid of their homes of mold and mildew. Then in ancient Greece, the philosopher Aristotle wrote about the harmful effects of mold on human health and the importance of preventing it growing in homes. But what Aristotle didn't really specify is how it should be removed, and he didn't have any insight on how homes will be built in the 20th and 21st century in America. He didn't even know America existed at that time. You know, water and fire damage restoration companies have really been around since the 1960s, but the word mold wasn't really tossed around much back then. And that brings us to the 1990s, the era where MTV ruled the world, presidents were only doing creepy things behind closed doors, and then we had the rise of the internet. It changed the way we got information. All sorts of new industries were blossoming because of the new information that was out there. But here's the thing, as a society, we were limited by really just getting our information from writers, whether it was television writers, newspaper writers, book authors, etc. They were the ones that were educating us. But the internet allowed all sorts of knowledgeable people from every industry to put out information on something new called a website. And soon after, people were beginning to learn more and more about mold and how it can be harmful for their health. Different environmental agencies and organizations began to take notice and guidelines to remove mold were starting to get established more broadly in the early half of the 2000s. And then just like everything else, it started to get monetized and mold remediation companies were popping up left and right. But when it really started to get going is when ambitious business owners started realizing most homeowners insurance policies were covering mold remediation. And these mold companies were multiplying even more every single year. Ah yes, good old capitalism, baby. That brings us to today where the mold remediation industry is a $210 billion a year industry. Because the mold industry is so deeply tied to the insurance industry, it opened up the doors for a lot of fraud. And when I say a lot of fraud, I mean, a lot of fraud. But that doesn't necessarily mean the mold remediation is a scam. It just means that there's a lot of scammers within the mold remediation industry. And in my experience, there's two types of mold remediators. You have the ones that sell off fear, and then you have the ones that sell off fat. Let's start with the mold remediators that sell off fear. As you know, a person's health is a weakness. You see, these mold remediators, they come into a house and talk about somebody's health and that's a weakness to a person. If a person comes into your home and tells you your home is gonna make you sick, you're gonna take notice, right? And the way they're looking at it is, even if the insurance company doesn't cover the actual mold damage, you're probably gonna pay for it out of pocket because your health is at risk, or so they say. And the sad reality is that unfortunately, some people wanna be scared. They thrive off it. That's just human nature. And the mold remediators, they get their money, so it's a win-win situation. And look, in some cases, there may actually be a problem. It just may be something like a $3,000 problem and they stretch it out to a $10,000 problem. You see, most insurance policies, they have a $10,000 limit for mold and fungi. And it doesn't cost the homeowner any more money to put in a claim for $3,000 compared to $10,000. So sometimes the mold remediation professional will kind of embellish the amount of damage that's there so they can extend the bill a little bit. And then you have mold remediators that sell on fact. They call it just like they see it. These are honest people that say, hey, you have a mold problem or hey, you don't have a mold problem. Look, mold remediation is absolutely necessary when extensive mold damage is present in the home. Let's say for example, that you have mold damage along a wall. You can't just hack into it and remove it without taking proper precautions. And removing the water damaged building material with proper precautions is basically what mold remediation is in a nutshell. Let me keep it simple for you. I'm gonna break down when mold remediation needs to be done and then we're gonna look at some real life examples. According to the EPA, who should do the mold cleanup depends on a number of factors. First is considering the size of the mold problem. If the moldy area is less than about 10 square feet, which is roughly a three by three area, in most cases, you can handle that job yourself. The key words being in most cases. There's always exceptions to the rule. The problem with that guideline is a few things. First, just because you don't see 10 square feet of mold doesn't mean you won't find it on the inside of walls. You have to understand that water sometimes has a mind of its own. Water is going to find the path of least resistance and a leak 
may be more extensive than you originally thought once you start opening walls. Then you also have the issue of it being airborne. The mold spores may have traveled throughout the air conditioning system and settled on surfaces throughout the home. The best way to determine if you have a mold problem in the home is to bring in a third party professional to do an assessment on the home and determine if you have an issue, not the remediation company that's actually doing it. You want somebody that has no financial interest in if the work is being done or not. So here's a real life example of when mold remediation was required. As you can see, the water damage under the kitchen cabinets is extensive. Mold was visible behind the stove and then the adjacent room also had mold growth present inside the walls. This was a no brainer. Mold remediation had to be done. Now, here's a case where a scammer mold remediation company scared the client into thinking they had a huge issue. Luckily, the client decided to bring in a third party that had nothing to do with the mold remediation company and saved the clients tons of money and the insurance company wouldn't have covered it anyways. And here's the thing about when you make an insurance claim, whether or not they cover it, they count it as a claim. Now in this case, there was just a little bit of mold next to an air conditioning register. The mold was caused by just a little bit of air escaping around the register, creating some condensation. The mold remediation company that came told the woman that there's likely a bunch of mold in the area surrounding in the attic, and now mold was on all her belongings too. Neither wind up being true. And unfortunately, that's the tragic reality of the mold remediation industry. So is mold remediation a scam? The answer is no, but there certainly is a lot of common in the industry. But it's not just limited to this industry. You have corrupt electricians, you have corrupt dentists, you have corrupt politicians, you have corrupt policemen. It's everywhere. It's just mold remediation has the perfect ingredients to certainly take advantage of somebody. You have A, the client who has two things in jeopardy that are very sacred to them, their home and their health. And then you have B, the insurance company, which basically has unlimited pockets. And it brings out the snake. Have you ever been scammed by a mold remediation company? I want to know. Leave me a comment below. And again, if you haven't subscribed, please hit that subscribe button and please visit our website, lookmold.com.